everyone today we are going to study biology 10th icsc transpiration part 3 we are going to deal with experiments on transpiration today the first experiment that we are going to study is to demonstrate the release of water vapor in a plant in this experiment three bell jars are taken bell jar a bell jar b and bell jar c what we have taken inside the bell jars in bell jar a and b is a potted plant the two pots of a and b have been covered with a polythene bag and the bag is tied firmly around the base of the stem. This bell jar A is then kept in the sunlight. In the second bell jar, bell jar B, there is a wood which has been attached with cobalt chloride paper. And in the third, which we basically call as control, there is no plant as such, but we have taken the wood with the cobalt chloride paper. The cobalt chloride paper is blue in color when it is dry but when it gets wet it becomes pink in color. We keep the three bell jars or the apparatus in the sunlight for some time. What we observe after some time is water vapor droplets because that they have condensed to form water and in bell jar A we see them on the walls of the bell jar. In bell jar B, we see the water droplets, but we see that the cobalt chloride paper has turned pink due to the presence of moisture. But there is no change in bell jar C because there is no moisture over here. It is only because of the release of water vapor from the two plants that have been kept in A and B. So, this experiment proves the release of water vapor during transpiration in a plant, especially when we keep it outside in sunlight because sunlight triggers the transpiration. The second experiment is to demonstrate that lower surface of a dicot leaf transpires more than the upper surface. We take a plant with a broad leaf whose uh, this is still attached to the plant and we take two strips of cobalt chloride paper. One strip is attached above and another strip is attached below the leaf. The dicot leaf is also called as dorsiventral leaf. This surface of the leaf is called as dorsal surface and the surface below is called as ventral surface. The arrangement of stomata or the number of stomata differs in the both surface of leaves and that is what we are going to study in this experiment. How we attach the cobalt chloride paper is we take slides, slides above and below the leaf and then we clamp it with the help of a clip. In this leaf what we see is after some time the cobalt chloride paper still remains blue. We have kept the plant outside in the sunlight and the upper part of the leaf is actually having lesser number of stomata. This leaf reveals the lower surface or the ventral surface of the leaf. The leaf that we saw before this one was the leaf which was actually the dorsal surface and this leaf which is below is the ventral surface. And what we see is that this cobalt chloride paper turns pink earlier. This will also turn pink but then it will take a little longer time but this has changed 
to pink earlier because this is the lower surface and the number of stomata is more on the ventral surface. It is so because the leaf is arranged in such a manner that the dorsal surface is exposed much to the sunlight and the ventral surface is not that much exposed. So the dorsal surface of the leaf has lesser number of stomata and the ventral surface of the leaf has more number of stomata. Since from the stomata transpiration takes place and so cobalt chloride paper converts pink earlier from the ventral surface. That means the two surface of a leaf differs in the number of stomata and therefore the transpiration differs on both the surfaces of the leaf. The third experiment is to measure the loss of water due to transpiration. This experiment is actually the measurement of transpiration by weighing method. What we do is we take a test tube and we fill it with water and insert a leafy shoot inside the test tube. We cover the surface of test tube with the water uh, with a drop of oil to prevent evaporation because the water can evaporate from this surface and therefore oil prevents the evaporation and then we place the test tube inside a beaker and then weigh them together that means the test tube having all the contents and the beaker will be weighed together and then we will keep this entire apparatus in sunlight for 3 hours after 3 hours we will again weigh the test tube in the same beaker and this will indicate the loss of water because there will be a difference in the weight. That means the water has been absorbed by the leafy shoot and has been transpired. So the water content will reduce and this will tell about the loss of water by transpiration. The fourth experiment is to demonstrate transpiration. with the help of Ganong's potometer. Potometer is an apparatus or device which is used to measure the water absorbed by a plant and thus it measures the rate of transpiration. This apparatus is called Ganong's potometer. We fill the apparatus with water. There are two vertical tubes as you can see. This tube is called as reservoir. This is the place from where we add water into the apparatus and this is known as the main tube. In this tube we allow a leafy twig to be inserted in and we cork it. The cork is actually a split cork which allows the twig to be inserted inside and this is the horizontal tube which is graduated. Graduated means these has linings, these has markings like that of a scale and the lower end of this horizontal tube is bent and is inserted into the beaker. The beaker is having water already so that the air connection is made uh, this is made airtight. You can see that the water is pinkish in color because we have colored it with eosin. This helps in seeing the air bubble nicely. So the visibility for the bubble increases and we keep this apparatus in sunlight for some hours. Before we observe or we take the observation we see an air bubble anywhere in this horizontal tube. Here the air bubble has been marked over here. After some time that means for 2 or 3 hours later what we see is that this air bubble has travelled to this level and these are actually graduations in the horizontal tube. This will tell suppose here the marking is 7 or 8 it will tell that here it has reached to the marking which is 2. That means this much water has been lost during transpiration. So the travelling of the air bubble actually helps in knowing the transpiration through Ganong's potometer. The last experiment that we are dealing with is the four leaf experiment. 
to demonstrate transpiration with the four leaves. These leaves are banyan leaves A, B, C and D. The four banyan leaves should be of the same size and we, what we do is on the first banyan leaf we apply Vaseline on the upper surface. On the second banyan leaf, we apply Vaseline on the lower surface. In the third banyan leaf, we apply Vaseline on both the surfaces and we leave the fourth banyan leaf which is D not at all coated with Vaseline. So there are four different types of banyan leaves coated with Vaseline in different manners. Vaseline is oily waxy substance which actually uh, stops the pores of stomata and does not allow transpiration. We leave this four leaves into the sun and what we see is that they dry but the time for getting them dried up is different. After two hours what we see is that the leaves dry. The leaf D will dry the first because it has not been coated with Vaseline at all. The upper surface and the lower surface both were open and therefore the leaf D will dry first. After that the second leaf will dry because it has been covered with the upper surface but the lower surface is open. The more number of stomata is present on the lower surface and therefore this leaf will dry at the second number. The third leaf to dry would be leaf B because it has been coated from the lower surface but the upper surface is open and therefore this will dry at the fourth number. And the last to dry will be the leaf C because it has been coated with Vaseline on both the surfaces. So the stomata are blocked from the upper as well as the lower surface and therefore this leaf will dry the last. Thank you.